Hey guys, I'm Adrian from Rabona TV, and with the sacking of Lucien Favre, following that shambolic performance versus Stuttgart, I figured it was time to take a deep dive into the world of Dortmund. So, we got Josh from JJD TV, a Borussia Dortmund centric channel that brings you everything BVB news, previews, reactions, live streams, and so much more. Be sure to check out his channel if you're a big Borussia Dortmund fan. It's linked in the description. We also have Dr. Manuel Veth. <laughs> the man with a stunning living room, who also is the North American area manager for your favorite website, Transfermarkt. Let's get to it. We'll talk about why Fav failed, where Dortmund's weaknesses are, and who will likely be the next manager of Borussia Dortmund. By the way, this video is sponsored by Canada. All three of us live in Canada. Okay, anyway, to the content. So I saw a stat back in June that, uh, which has since changed, I believe. I think I actually read one of your articles that showed that it has changed, but Favre at one point had the highest points total per game mm -hmm. of any Borussia Dortmund manager since, you know, overtaken by Tuchel, given his bad run of form recently. Um, and obviously stats don't tell the whole story, yeah. but well, for one, it felt like this season, unless Dortmund ran away with the league title, it felt like it was the end for Lucien Favre. And I mean, his contract would have been up anyways. And two, it felt like at any point during this season, Whenever Dortmund would drop points, that would be it for him. So were you surprised by a sacking at all? Or was this just, you know, the, something you were expecting to see for a while? I think I think we all knew the, the end was coming at the end of this year, right? Um, contract negotiations never really took off. Um, they were postponed several times. He had a fantastic first season, pretty solid second season but we didn't win anything and we're we've been a club now who've gone a few seasons without any silverware and that's obviously annoying the fans have been begging for for winning yes coming close and being two points off was nice and that's what kind of gave us hope that all right next season with all the new signings it's game time but we regressed now the, the pressure's on and i i've said it many times with people who've asked me i said i believe and i personally did he'd finish the season because financial issues covid he was on a contract to the end of the season this is his last shot. If he doesn't get any type of silverware this season, he's done, contract's over. But even the games that we've won this season, we've gone into every game with no mentality and we've gone down and we are crying at halftime and then out of nowhere, just through individual talent, we end up getting, getting points. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you there because it felt like Erling Haaland was largely papering over the cracks for him. And also just the, the comments by players like Mats Hummels saying the things that he said that, you know, the tactics are just not working. Marco Roy is saying, you know, we, we can't defend. Those were quite, quite major indictments. For, you know, those, those, those were big things to say. And I mean, when you have players like Mats Hummels and Marco Royce speaking out against the tactics, mm -hmm. those are two massive voices. So it, it, it did feel like once you heard those quotes, like, this is it. Yeah. This has got to be it for him. You just could. It wasn't that the quality wasn't on the field. It was that the, the the players did not react to what the coaches told them to. So he, in my opinion, he had lost the dressing room. And so I, I very much had the sense that on this weekend, it was over for him. You know, there is stories like that Lucien Favre gives team talks with his back turned to the team. You know, anyone who does motivational talks knows that that's just not, that's a no-go. You, you can't do that. I mean, I've been to many of Lucien Favre's press conferences and I absolutely, I, I really, I adore the man. I think he is, he's, he's a, a wonderful human being, but he gives you answers and you just, you just left stranded. And it must've always been confusing in those press conferences when he was answering you with his back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Dortmund is a very emotional place. It's a working class city. They need someone who can speak to the people of the city and the players that, you know, that. Uh, represent that city and it's it's just a completely different environment you, you can be a technocrat you can be a pep guardiola a hansi yeah. flick a thomas tuchel you can be that or a sari or bielsa you can be that sort of coach in munich it wouldn't be not an issue at all but in dortmund you need something a bit more different and i think he just failed in that department completely yeah, and i guess that speaks to why klopp was such a hit within that yeah. city let's talk about points again just for a second because okay. it's been interesting seeing how Bayern Munich have basically raised the level of the league to a point where 
the necessary number of points to be champions is something that it just seems like the rest of Germany cannot keep up with. And Favre came close, but do you think that he was basically just fighting a losing battle in this regard? Can Bayern be topped at this point? Well, and that's an excellent question because like a lot of people who have been very negative about Favre over the past few seasons, I've, I've been saying like that season before he came in, we had a dreadful season and he came and he steered the ship he gave us a title challenge that came out of absolutely nowhere. He transformed Jaden Sancho, and and it was honestly like it was exciting. I believe that season we finished with seventy six points and Bayern seventy eight. And for Bayern, even seventy eight points isn't very good. That's that's a poor season for them, and that was a Nico Kovac disaster class, however you want to put it. They shouldn't have won the title that season. But a general Bayern Munich can put up eighty plus seasons. So yes, Faber came so close, but like you said, that's it was an off season for Bayern, yet we still can get the job. So, I mean, I wouldn't say that we're, we're fighting a losing battle, but it's those kind of moments, those kind of seasons, because they don't happen every season where Bayern doesn't put up high 80s, 90 points, and we got to take advantage of it. Borussia Dortmund uh, in their first year under Favre had an eight-point and a nine-point advantage at a time of the season where no club ever would gamble away the title again, right? So, um, I mean, that's, that's quite an achievement to be eight points clear at a point of the season where no club ever lost the title afterwards and then to do it again with nine <laughs> points at the point of the season where no club ever has done it again and he's he shattered both those records so uh, there's a lot of talk about how Bayern are dominating the league but that really hasn't been the case in the last three years it's more like that the other three teams that challenge them usually haven't really made the most of Bayern you know Bayern stumbles and even this year you look at Bayern's result they're very, very much dominating in the Champions League. Um, what is it now? 16 games in a row that they haven't lost. They have won 15 of them. They can afford to go with their second team to Atletico Madrid and still easily get a point, right? Whereas in the Bundesliga, they, they dropped points to Union Berlin. They lost 4-1 to Hoffenheim. They um, they lost. They dropped two points to Leipzig. Um, you know, they dropped two points to Werder Bremen. That's already four games just on match day 11, where they drop points. That's that's yeah. quite a lot. <laughs> and True. I mean, uh, Leverkusen are now top of the table. Leipzig are even with them. So they are getting pushed a lot more in the Bundesliga. They're just not getting pushed by Borussia Dortmund. So that calls into question. I mean, obviously, Fav takes a lot of the blame for how things have gone there. But do you believe that this Dortmund squad is capable of winning the Bundesliga or does more investment need to be made? I do think that they're capable of winning the Bundesliga, especially this year. I think that that squad is strong enough. I do think that they made a mistake by not signing a second striker. And Mark Royce is not a number nine. Julian Brandt is definitely not a number nine. <laughs> I believe a large part of the reason that we lost the season that we came so close was is because Paco was out the majority of the season. I think he only started 10 games that season and was obviously a great super sub, but we didn't have a backup striker. We had a Mario Götze who's a center attacking mid got transformed into a false nine. And this season we had Erling Holland. And I said to myself, yes, we have Mukuku coming up. He's 16. Will he be able to compete with the big boys? I don't know. But if we're looking to compete for titles and Holland A needs rest because it's a COVID packed season, or if he gets injured, I'd like to have a solid backup striker. Amiru Mandzukic, for example, brings to something different. He was a free agent. I was stressing that's a player that we could have signed and, and could have needed. We chose to go the youth route, which is something that's very common with Dortmund. And I also reiterated the fact that I thought we needed another central defender. I didn't think that our defense could really challenge aggressively Bayern for the title. So for in my opinion, those are the two big pieces. And from watching the season, those were two huge reasons of why we're struggling. So the squad we have right now and what we're at in the season, I don't believe we can go for a uh, Go for the title unless obviously we pull up some kind of Hansi Flick type turnaround here, but you never know. I think that in defense, um, I mean, defensive cover is never a bad thing, but I do feel like it's not so much a personnel problem that Dortmund has. It seems like an organizational and a system problem when it comes to the defending. About a year ago, year and a month ago, Bayern loses 5-1, sack Kovac, bring in Hansi Flick. Fast forward a year and a month later, Dortmund loses 5-1, Sack Fav, bring in his assistant, Eden Terzic. So obviously winning a treble is a massive ask of this young manager. <laughs> so what would you consider a success for him? I think he needs to finish in the top four. Um, everything else right now for this Dortmund side is a bonus. I don't know if we're going to have a Hansi Flick kind of moment in Dortmund because the situation is just so different. Hansi yeah. Flick is someone who's worked with all these national team players in Munich. 
or was a major part of Germany's success with the national team, um, you know, always in the quiet and the background. Eden Terzic doesn't have that, that background at all. I think they have to finish in the top four. You know, um, of course, it'd be nice if they challenge for the title, it'd be good for the league. But I think the title challenge will be up to someone else this year. I think it, it will be Leipzig that will push Bayern all the way. Well, I think there's only one thing we can expect. It has to be the treble, no? <laughs> exactly. <we're> yeah. <laughs> okay, next no, question. But, no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, guy. But no, um, I actually was asked that question a couple of times on a few of our watch longs. And I think right now for him coming in with obviously, he's got a decent amount of coaching experience. He's never obviously managed someone at the, at the top flight like this. So for him coming in, the number one thing I would like to see from him is to get a top four finish. Yes, I know that's not the goal, but when you fire your manager mid-season, it's obviously already stats at a poor season. We can't miss out on the top four. We have to qualify the Champions League. I don't care if we finish fourth, third, or second right now. Obviously, I'd like to see a great turnaround in form and compete for the title, but I think a realistic target for him is top four finish comfortably, as well as competing in the Cup and the Champions League. Yeah, I think that's very reasonable. That's that's sort of the bare minimum you'd expect for any manager at Borussia Dortmund in this sort of scenario, of course, because mm -hmm. once you have someone coming in who we'll get to in a second, uh, <laughs> obviously the expectations get much higher. So you know what, let's just look to the future right now. Um, and before we get to the most likely managers to take over. Um, Good stuff. <laughs> Let's look at one of Dorma's issues, which is the defense. It's consistently been an issue for a while now, quite a few seasons. Um, would you like to, I mean, I think you would like to see a more pragmatic coach, such as an Allegri with the team. Um, or is that a disaster just waiting to happen, given the personnel there? Personally, I don't think so, because I think that you do have some good defenders and it's just a system issue. But what's your take on it? Well, I was pretty vocal, at least with our defense because I, I thought it's been so shaky so inconsistent we actually and i don't know if you knew this we went on a run of form this season where we got four clean sheets in a row and i had a few people being like very surprised and like what happened and that was actually we switched from the 343 into the 4231 all of a sudden we're defending well and then that and then that turned around but everyone was screaming for Dortmund to sign a manager like Mourinho. and if you look at who was available out there right now and i said which i doubt what was going to happen that Favre was going to get sacked but i'm like there's two legitimate managers out there Pochettino, Allegri. Why not shake it up? We, we have so much talent going forward. We don't usually struggle with at least chances. It's the defense that can kill us in games. And if we can get a, a, a manager in like Allegri, who's won everything there was to win in Italian football, he's competed at the highest levels in the Champions League. He's managed different teams. Milan, Juve, found success. For me, natural, that's just who I was looking to, but I wasn't realistic about it because of the German language barrier, which is a big issue why managers like that don't come in. But I do believe, like you said, we have good defenders there and maybe a change in system can go forward, but it sounds like uh, Ed Interzic is going to be looking at going uh, at all attack minded and not really focus on the defense. Yeah, because I mean, and this obviously could be a bit of an apples to oranges type thing, but you look at what Mourinho did at Tottenham and how he was able to take that back line that was just like absolutely hemorrhaging goals um, and he turned them into right now at least the most solid defensive team in the uh, in the league right now so i guess we'll see i guess we'll see whoever comes up maybe terzic is that guy i don't know but i mean we've yeah. seen names like ralph regnick go around marco rosa from Borussia Mönchengladbach, jesse marsh from uh, red bull salzburg um and we know that marsh likes to play a very attacking football as he did with salzburg somewhat to their detriment at times but at least it's entertaining <laughs> and it's something that i think that a lot of the uh, a lot of the Dortmund fans. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but they would really appreciate that kind of style, at least. So that said, who would you like to see besides Allegri? I know that you you wanted to sort of test the waters with <laughs> yeah. him a bit, but yeah. uh, besides him, who would you like to see for Dortmund? Well, just touching on your Mourinho point, I owe him a huge apology because I thought he was completely washed up, and I was always saying to the Dortmund fans, <laughs> "Why would he go for him? He is his, he hasn't can't adapt to the way the game's being played now. He's goner." Turn around Tottenham, so I mean, slap me in the face. But to go on your actual question, uh, I had a, a nice conversation with a couple people, and I was saying that if we don't sign a manager right now, which would, in my opinion would have been Poch and Allegri, that clearly indicates that the, the language barrier is an issue and we're going to be going for someone and potentially even the, the financials. So there's only, for me personally, two names that are, are legitimate. I think Ragnar has got too many too much baggage. He likes too much control over the club, which I don't think he would ever get at Borussia Dortmund, even though I have read on Twitter and Instagram that a lot of fans may like him. I think that yeah. would be someone you could bring in right now and just steady the ship. But 
uh, you mentioned it that you know red bull passed <laughs> that's that's difficult and because it's not just red bull passed i mean jesse marsh and marco rosa have a red bull passed as True. well so yeah. does julian nagelsmann who has also yeah. been into talks um they all bring that red bull brand of football that i personally think fits actually very well to borussia dortmund because it's a very it's this brand of football that they play too yeah um, but it's one thing playing that brand of football but also telling your fans you know you know this is a club that when Leipzig come to town, they just show Dortmund versus Leipzig. They don't show the, the logo because, you know, it, it yeah. clashes with their own advertiser. Yeah. Um, this is the sort of thing that is happening there. So it's really hard to to tell your fans, okay, this is what we bring in. So Rangnick is out. I think it's a bit different with Jesse Marsh and Rose and um, small extent Nagelsmann. You can sort of sell that to to the fans. And of the, the three, I know that Nagelsmann and Rose have an extra clause next year, next summer. Um, so they're both available. I know also that Nagelsmann loves working in Leipzig, um, mm. you know, because he has the freedom to work there and he is sort of the boss there. I personally would love to see Jesse Marsh in Dortmund. I think his brand of football is bang on. And it's mm -hmm. not just his brand of football that is bang on. It's also his personality. You know, he is um, having interviewed Jesse Marsh in the past and spoken to Jesse Marsh many times when I've been down to Salzburg. Uh, I just absolutely love the energy that he would bring and brings to any club that he's working at, right? And he's learned quite a bit in Salzburg. I think that environment has been very good for him. I think personally, right now, Marco Rose is the favorite. There's been already rumors linking him to an agreement. I don't know how true it is. But for me, I just think that Jesse Marsh makes the most sense. I think, and you may know this as well, the Bundesliga is growing in the North American market. I just think it's natural for an American coach to come and finally take over a club like Borussia Dortmund, he's got the German language, he's got the connection to Holland, he plays attack mining football, which the club would like. It just, to me, it kind of seems like a no-brainer, but I think Marco Rose will be the favorite. Marco Rose, I personally think he might be the favorite to take over because I think he has taken Gladbach as far as you can take that club. Um, you know, as we're speaking, they're, they're down to one to Eintracht Frankfurt. They've been playing fantastic football. They've gotten through their Champions League group, first time in the club's history. And this is a club that's going places, but um, there is, there's a glass ceiling for Gladbach, I think, because, you know, unlike Leipzig, they don't have an investor in the background. They're one of many clubs in that area. Um, so he, he will hit that glass ceiling eventually with that club. It will always be Champions League qualification, maybe on a year where you're very lucky, you can maybe play for the title and everything has to go perfectly, right? With Dortmund, you can consistently do that. And he's very charismatic. He's a very charismatic coach. He is a coach that has the Bundesliga experience. He plays that attacking brand of football that they love in Dortmund. So I actually would say that he is my favorite, just about etching out Jesse Marsh. And I know Dortmund are looking at both Rose and Marsh very closely. So it could be either one of them, but I would say tentatively Rose is a slight favorite. Yeah, that's, I mean, from the reading that I've done, um, that certainly seems like it would be the best fit. Even at the beginning of the season, you had all of this, you know, speculation that this is it for Fav, who's next? And it was always Marco Rosa that was the one that was put at the top of the list. But I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Jesse Marsh in the Bundesliga in the next two seasons or so. I mean, if Rosa goes to Dortmund, then Marsh, there's a position available in Gladbach. And I, that's not unrealistic because yeah. you know this is the guy who succeeded rose at salzburg <laughs> and, following him around <laughs> yeah it's kind of following him around but i mean it is a similar brand of football and the you know you, you can love or hate red bull for what they do in football um that's a completely different discussion but there is no <laughs> doubt that that brand of football is extremely attractive yeah. and it works it is it gets you results and you know leaving the complete financial aspects of out of the game it is something that people tune in and watch on. And then, I mean, especially here in North America, where people are not quite so married to the whole traditionalist aspect of the game, I think they don't really care. And that's why the Red Bull brand and RB Leipzig are, are one of the teams that people watch, right? Because yeah. it's same with Salzburg. People watch Salzburg because they know they're going to be entertained. Even when Salzburg <laughs> lose, you're still going to be entertained. And I think that is something that Dortmund fans also like. Yeah. But they would never admit that it is a Red Bull brand product that they like <laughs> is, is essentially are consuming. So uh, I'm going to get a lot of shouts in the comments from uh, Dortmund fans on this, but it, it's the truth. It's the reality of things.
Yeah, it's it's so true, especially just looking back at that Salzburg team, what they've done in the Champions League, even when they're losing 6-2, they're still attacking and attacking and attacking somewhat to their detriment, of course. But I mean, it's so entertaining. And that's that was my first thought when I saw these yeah. uh, these links with Marsh to Dortmund, that this is a this is a style that would they would really take to heart and enjoy. Yeah, it could work, you know, yeah. but the same is the same is true for Rosa. Not that anyone cares, but I personally would be happy seeing either Jesse Marsh, Montreal Impact Connection, great stuff at Red Bull Salzburg, or Marco Rosa, you know how I feel about him. So I don't think Borussia Dortmund can go wrong with either of them. But I thank you for joining me and the guys for this discussion. And if you enjoyed it, then do leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here. I'm Adrian, this is Rabona TV, and we'll catch you in the next video. Arsenal, you're next. Ciao.